Now we're going to uh, focus on the issue of gender equity and it's a, is it on the agenda in Australia. Now Associate Professor Lynn Corcor Corcoran is the Laboratory Head Molecular Immunology at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute. Lynn is a, um, has an outstanding research career and has made seminal contributions to the research fields of cancer, parasitology and immunology. Lynn has co-chaired the Gender Equity Committee at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute since its establishment in 2010, and today she's going to share with us initiatives that they've undertaken in their workplace to ensure gender equity. Please welcome Lynn Corcoran. I introduce myself, uh, uh, disclaimer, I'm a molecular immunologist, as you heard, and I love, uh, run a laboratory there. I've been at the Hall Institute, despite my strange accent, since I on and off since I started my PhD there in the 80s. And um, in the end of 2009, we got a new director, Doug Hilton, and Doug had a look at some of our numbers and decided he needed to make some changes at the institute and asked me to form a gender equity committee to help those things happen. So I'll tell you about our, um, what we've been up to. Being a scientist, I have to do this in science structure, outline, introduction, methods, results, conclusions, and acknowledgments, and that's what this will be. First of all, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the problem, which really none of you need to have defined for you. Uh, there are, oh, there are, I could have organized it in a couple of ways, talking about some of the things that we're doing outside of our institute, which I'll highlight, and then um, the things that I'm really gonna tell you about, which was uh, what we, started to do it first is to put our house in order as much as we could. This was our problem and I, you know, it's the same problem everywhere. Uh, these are laboratory heads, our middle managers. Uh, I point out to you that, um, is that a pointer? Oh, never mind. That women are, unlike the uh, numbers that Lisa gave us earlier, uh, women are overrepresented as our PhD students and postdoctoral fellows, just a little bit more than 50% at our institute would, are female. But the promotion to position of responsibility in the form of lab heads, uh, uh, the women lag behind. Uh, when uh, we first started our efforts here in 2009, you can see in pink the number of lab heads uh, who are female, which is rising a little bit, uh, we hope, thanks to some of our efforts, and is now currently 32%. Uh, but the problem is even more clear when you look at division heads, our, our, our uh, most senior members of faculty, and that we have only 14% women at that level. So this is a problem, you know, in all, probably all research institutions and universities. Many reasons why, of course, we read about it all the time. Family commitments are obvious, uh, confidence issues, uh, role models, you know, funding, et cetera, et cetera, subtle and overt bias. And I won't go into those because we all have either read about them or felt them. Um, but what are some of the solutions? And, and being a very pragmatic individual, that was where I wanted to um, get started. In terms of us trying to influence beyond our institution, we have, we've participated in, in a number of things. We've put forward um, suggestions to the McKeon Review of the NHMRC. Most of our funding comes from the NHMRC. And we asked at that time, among other things, for um, clear guidelines and allowances for family leave, and you've heard that that's happened at some of our um, uh, grant review panels. We want official recognition for institutional support roles, as Merlin was referring to, teaching, committee work, mentoring, training. Lots of those things are taken up uh, in large part by women, uh, certainly not only by women, but we'd like them to get credit for that kind of work. Uh, we'd like to have uh, uh, make it easier for people to invite women to conferences by having national registers of, of um, experienced uh, professionals in each area of research. And we'd like to have more women on NHMRC committees. We're also good friends of the NHMRC uh, Women in Science Committee and regularly communicate with them. And we were happy to see when, when the report came out from the McCune Review that um, they'd heard some of the things we said and they put uh, a, a recommendation regarding um, gender equity solutions into their report, which you can read if you wish. You've also heard this morning from about the, um, the SAGE initiative. There was a fantastic meeting in Canberra in November last year 
where um, the Australian Academy of Science was organizing people who were interested in participating in an Athena Swan pilot program. Uh, the people in the room were very senior individuals, heads of granting bodies and uh, institutions and universities, uh, and they were all interested in hearing about Athena Swan, which is at the moment exclusively uh, a UK initiative, um, very stringent uh, for institutions to examine their own gender uh, balances, their policies and procedures, what's working, what's not working, and forcing them to consider what they need to do to make it better. Uh, and now attainment of a particular, attainment of um, research funding is now tied to your level of uh, Athena Swan Award in the UK. They'd like to spread their influence by, and there's interest in Canada and New Zealand and Australia now, and this pilot um, was um, set up and applications were made to it uh, earlier in the middle of this year. To be part of the pilot program, they wanted to have 20 institutions uh, participate in Australia. There was going to be a cost to participate um, and it was going to take a couple of years of fairly hard work and at the end of that uh, attempt to obtain a bronze award. That's starting now and as we didn't know what the outcome of our application was but we heard yesterday that we were in and uh, we're, interestingly, they got such a, a, a large response to the calls for applications they've had to expand it to 32 organizations and institutions and to have two rounds of, um, of a program, so one starting next month and one starting in 12 months time and we've We've asked to be part, part of the first one. We hope we can. We see no reason to wait. Um, we're also part of a Victorian uh, um, initiative, Vesky's Inspiring Women Working Group, which has got roles in mentoring and training and offers some prizes and fellowships for women. And locally in Parkville, there's another collection of institutions called WISP, the Women in Science Parkville Precinct, Howard Florey, WEHI, Peter Mack, etc. And what we hope what that organization hopes is to be able to speak to employers and granting agencies with a, with a larger voice than each individual could on their own. So now what do we do in our own um, institution? This was all started back in about 2010. There was a window of opportunity there and we feel that acutely. We have a director who just took over at that time, was deeply committed to the cause of gender equity. His name is Doug Hilton. And there is a little, bit, a little bit of funding available for us to sort of um, pay for some initiatives. The very strong intention of our board is that the money that comes into our institute pays for research and not other things. Well, indirectly, I reckon supporting women pays for research, but anyway, we won't argue about that. The uh, committee has myself as a chair and I enlisted uh, Terry Speed as a co-chair, uh, both very practical, extroverted individuals who aren't afraid to swear in public, and so he's a great partner. We have on the committee, unfortunately it's too big because so many people want to participate, but lots of scientists and people from our HR departments and the chief operating officer, et cetera. So we have people from many um, parts of the institute, but it's mostly science scientists, uh, and about over a quarter are male, and they're very enthusiastic. So we put our efforts into these three sort of general areas of child care and family support, uh, equal pay promotion and uh, appointment, and then training and mentoring uh, for women, because we realize that it's the obvious, families uh, and children are the obvious things that we can help out with, but the other things are a little bit more um, subtle, perhaps, and difficult. So the first things we started to do was things that were obvious and free because we thought nobody's gonna complain about these things. We have family-friendly meeting times. No meetings before nine, no meetings go after five. We have rooms in our institute which we set aside for functions like breastfeeding and milk production and storage and emergency care for people whose uh, children are sick uh, and they can't find other care for their kids. We've obviously, like many people, have extended contract renewal times for women um, when they take maternity leave. Uh, we've also um, offered that to women immediately they arrive at WEHI. They don't have to wait for 12 months to get pregnant after they get, come to WEHI before they can be, um, benefit from those um, policies. 
We've had our IT department help us so that people can work from home more easily. And we have flexible working arrangements, job sharing, including at the lab head level. So um, uh, I'm hoping that that will make it easier for people during those times. We got a little bit assertive then. We decided we're going to do things that cost money. And so we've uh, offered some packages, child care uh, cost assistance up to $15,000 a year for any sort of child care, including bringing your parents or partner or whatever to a conference if you have a young child and you want to attend. And a second one, which is um, up to $20,000 for each pregnancy in uh, technical support for you while you're away or when you get back to help get things um, moving faster. These are both named after long-term supporters of the Institute. We've given up to uh, more than 40 of each one, each one of these, which sounds like a lot of money, but if you do the math, and math was one of my best subjects at school, um, it really only amounts to about one project grant in annual income, so it's not a lot of money. We also started sponsoring Lauren, um, at Lorne conferences, you may know if you're a, a, a cancer biologist, genome biologist, protein chemist. They have several conferences there in the summer during the school holidays and um, one of them asked us if they, we could help them with childcare during the conference and we, so we have for many years now had a room that we pay for where families can view the, um, the, conference, the conference presentations but with kids in the room. So expect it to be noisy and chaotic but um, you can take your kids with you if you want. So, that, so now the first conference asked for that and then word of mouth spread and so now we do that for all six conferences and we have done for about five years. So those are some of the things we do that cost money. Um, this is a little bit of feedback from people that have received those, those child care support or technical support. It obviously makes the decision to, turn, to return to work easier. And I've underlined some of the things there that when I read them are, are sort of tender points for me. Missed opportunities is an emotional strain. My, my, uh, my employer was there to support me. I was going to miss a major in, uh, invitation and I might not have gotten another one. And then I found out my, my uh, employer would help me out. Boosted my self-confidence. The timing was so important because it was, and it, and it helped both me and my husband during a busy time in my life. I'm proud because I received the award and I was able to remain productive and internationally competitive. And interesting in this last one, she said I was, as a result I was successful in attracting funding. So she got a grant, therefore it's all paid for. Because uh, her single grant justifies all the expense that we, uh, that we have made. It's not that much expense anyway. Um, the thing that is really our big, our big goal is that building there on the right, that's the new refurbished and extended Walter and Eliza Hall Institute. And this thing in the middle of the picture is the child care center that we want to build adjacent to our building. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. It's 25 years too late for me, but um, I think we're very close. Our board has approved it. Uh, we have some very significant donors who are interested in participating in, um, in getting it going. We have a business plan, uh, which we expect the board to uh, approve at the end of this year, and we expect to start going out to tender for the building in next year. We'll obviously have first access for WeHi, but if you've been in Parkville, you've seen all the buildings there, that the research institutes that have been built and not except for the Royal Children's Hospital, not a single child care center is included in that planning. So we expect that there will be other people interested in some space in our child care center. The second thing is uh, pay and appointment and promotion. There's a fellowship we give only one of, I'm afraid, that, so it's not that many, but one every, once every five years. This is for a woman, the Corey Fellowship. Um, all of our internal committees have to have strong female uh, um, representation, including as chairs. We have a new appointments and promotions policy where gender is meant to be considered from the very earliest stages of the search committee all the way through, um, um, to, through to appointment. And on the third issue, we have a mentoring program. We're still learning how to do this, I think, um, but uh, we're very keen to get it started. And that's not just for women, although women partake of it uh, at a higher uh, frequency than men. 
We have women in science lecture, obviously professional and successful women come and give lectures and speak with our students and postdocs. Um, we do some leadership training and we sponsor the Biomed Network uh, for Women in Science. And uh, one of my favorite things is we have this formal policy which was referred to earlier um, for women's equal representation at all the internal meetings at WEHI, including speakers and chairs. And that's been going on for a while, and I really love going to every conference, seeing 50% of women on the podium, and, uh, and having nobody tell me the meeting was not that good. Everybody says the meeting was fantastic. We just didn't really notice how different it was in composition. And uh, I really think this is a watershed moment for uh, changes in gender equity. I know there was a lot of lift service to it when I came back from MIT with my baby in, you know, 91, um, wishing that things would be different. But I'm actually seeing more powerful people speak about it now and actually actions following those words. As I said before, WEHI sponsors uh, all the Lauren conferences um, and, and uh, a pediatrician in Western Australia wrote to us to tell us that she's having her meeting uh, on palliative medicine, have a family room as well in their conference. Uh, I told you that um, we support the Lauren conferences, but we also have been asked to give some bursary, travel bursaries for female speakers. And we said yes, we would, and that's now been matched by three other sponsoring organizations who are commercial and academic. Uh, and they have Women in Science Awards now. Uh, our child care subsidies have been um, matched when we hire scientists go to other organizations. Uh, I told you the NHMRC has taken on board some of our recommendations, but we don't feel like we're, you know, we are the be all and end all of ideas. And I think the Athena Swan thing will be a great uh, national uh, initiative. And I would encourage you all to sign up for the Women in Life Sciences database uh, because uh, on conversing with them, they've decided to include Australia and Europe. So if you want to get a job or a grant uh, advertised in Europe, then you can do so. Uh, we have a few challenges still getting our, our things right, uh, preventing an us and them kind of a sense in preferential treatment within WEHI and, um, and the other things that I show you here. But um, being a, a practical person, I agree with Elizabeth Broderick's comment that after all progress may not come in one leap but in small intentional steps and that's what we're trying to take. I thank my committee and our director for making these things possible.